who has an unknown number of thumbs and doesn't know how to count? This guy! Welcome back to Fez! Today we're going to explore a little bit more and hopefully finish up the last things we're gonna do, but oh god! Oh god, I don't like this. Uh... Forgot about that room. Instead of going there, we're gonna hold off on that for a little bit, and instead we're gonna we're gonna climb to the top of this this room because there's one more thing for us to do before entering the scary dimension full of death. You know? I hope you agree with me when I say that that is terrifying. Anyway, we've got this bell up here. We didn't know what to do with it before, but now we know numbers. So, one, two. Three. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. One. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. There we go. Bell destroyed, and we get an anti cube for it. So that's all good. We finished that room. Right, alright. I guess we have no choice then. We're gonna go to the scary place. Scary place, here we come. Uh, oh god, I don't like this. Alright, so you may be able to tell that we've got one platform of each different type for many of the places we've explored. So to be honest, this is good area to do near the end of the game because it kind of sums up a lot of stuff also it's got this really disturbing sounding remix of a song from the game this whole area is just really weird and I honestly don't know what to think about it Okay. Oh, we can go over that way, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to see when literally everything around you is a constantly changing mass of disgusting amorphousness. You know, that tends to not help. You know, I'm just kind of making blind jumps at this point, hoping that I land on something solid. We must be getting close to some sort of ending. Oh, that's a crumbling platform. Okay. I mean, how many different types of platforms are there? Just... just a few, right? Can't be that much more. Okay. We made it! We got the anti-cube! Is that all we need? Are we done with this? We're done with this. Let's get out of here! Jeez! I don't like spending time there. I'm gonna be honest, it's not my cup of tea. <sighs> okay, glad we got that out of the way. Where to now? These are the questions we must ask ourselves as a society. Let's zoom out. Yeah. It's nice to take a step back, analyze everything from afar, really take a look at your life, see what's going on. Oh, that's a good idea. We can go to the th place. With the things. Yeah. You all know the one. The place. With the things. As you may remember, last episode, we got the final owl out of four. The four different owls scattered across the landscape that you can only find during nighttime and are kind of obtuse, abstruse, ob ob obese to find. Not obese, that is not the correct word in that scenario, but whatever. Uh, this isn't the right way, is it? This is the right way, maybe? I honestly have no idea where I'm going. This game is like a maze. It's amazing! Ah! Oh ho ho! Ho ho ho! Hmm. Ha. He. Hilarious. Come on, it's gotta be around here somewhere. It's got to be here somewhere. Where are you, Owl Room? 
come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. There you are. I found you at last. Alright, cool. So, we have the final hour. Hour? Owl? That was a muted victory noise because we were behind the pillar when it turned. But now we gain access to a larger owl room. With an anti cube at the top. <gasps> Could it be? It is! The final cube bit. The last one we need to get all 32 regular cubes. Huzzah! Nice! <laughs> what an achievement. Sadly, we don't actually get a physical Steam achievement for doing that, but we have the satisfaction of knowing that we did a job well done. And isn't that all we really need? Also an anti-cube? Alright, cool. So, there are four more anti-cubes in the game, but I believe we can't get any of those four at this point without completing the game once. So we are going to go do that. Hi, Owls. You guys have fun, alright? You, we've got, you can order pizza if you really want to, if you get hungry. Um, you can watch some TV, I've got Netflix. You'll have a good time. Alright, bye. Alright, so now, plan of action, we're beating the game. Or at least we're getting the ending. Beating the game and getting the ending might be two different things at this point, but at least there are two things we can do. That's another thing we can do. Falling off a cliff? Yeah. Totally viable. Okay, here we are. End the line. We are going to go back to green. It doesn't deserve a name. It's not the first hub world. It's green. Just green. That's all. Whew. Well, that was something. Glad we found that last cube bit. And this is the wrong hub world. We're going to blue instead. <laughs> Smart choices. Smart choices. Make sure you go to light blue instead of dark blue. There's a difference. They are different locations in the world. You must take heed of. Anyway. So, the location of the final area of the game. There's no final boss per se, but there is a finale for certain. To get there, first we're going to head through that 16 cube door that we opened a while ago. And in there, you will find the civilization that we discovered. The only other flourishing civilization than our own in this entire game. The one with the nice music, you remember. And here we have the grand 32 cube door. Stand in front of it. We'll activate it with our 32 cool, awesome, regular cubes. And head through. Here's where things get complicated. If you remember, at the failed civilization we found at the final hub world, there was a room much like this. With a frame much like this. But it was broken. In the center there was nothing but black holes. And it seemed more like an experiment gone wrong. This civilization got it right. So we're going to use the Stargate to travel somewhere completely different.
Welcome to the final room. We're in space, so we move a little bit slower, but our jump is much, much higher. This allows us to ascend vertically to the top of this mysterious realm. All the artifacts we've collected have come from some sort of source, some other civilization before the ones that exist today that created everything, that based everything else. But what was this civilization? What could have existed on such an advanced level to create the kind of things that exist there? Could this civilization have created the things we were using during our adventure, such as the warp gates? It's hard to say. But something, someone, was there before us. The skull we found near the end of our adventure confirmed this and showed that there was some higher power at work, something calling the shots behind even the most powerful of governments. This was also confirmed by some of the artwork in the former civilizations that we found. But as we ascend to the top of this strange, infernal structure, we really have to ask ourselves, why have they hidden themselves? Why has this civilization been so prosperous and then at the last second abandoned us entirely? Why haven't we heard from them? And why did the cube explode in the first place? Well, these questions may or may not be answered here, but it's at least worth a shot to try and find out. At the top, you can see we have an owl statue. What could its connection be to the rest of the game? What, what are these creatures? What is going on? So many unanswered questions, but it seems that the most important one, the most interesting unanswered question of these is... Are we alone in the universe? I'll just let you interpret this ending for yourself. If you think it means anything, that is. Dang, 15 sixteenths. Close, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna be enough. Seems familiar. Huh. Deja vu all over again. Oh. Okay. So, I guess everything turned out alright in the end. Seems like the world was saved, or whatever. And now Gomez can return to his... home... town... Uh... This doesn't seem right. Yeah, something is very wrong. This doesn't normally happen. Um... Uh, is it something with my capture device? Is my computer just glitching out? Yeah, this is really weird.
Oh god, this reminds me of Super Hexagon. Ugh. Well, now that we're done with our existential crisis, how about a drum solo? Yeah! Fez! Excitement! Woo! <laughs> Yay! We did it! Oh. Okay. Yeah, Fez! <laughs> okay, well... Make of that what you will. Um... Yeah, what... What can one say about that ending? It's, uh... Very interesting, to say the least. The... The vibrating strings at some point kind of remind me of, uh... Like, string theory, how the universe is supposedly made up of vibrating strings in the tenth dimension, but... Not sure what that has to do with everything. But one thing remains certain, and that is that we didn't get all the cubes. This is a problem. It must be solved. But how do we get the four anti-cubes that we are still missing? Well, one of the most important factors is that now that we've completed the game, we're going to get something new as soon as we start it up again. So we're going to watch the credits roll, and once they're done, we will start anew next episode. So, I'll thank you guys all for watching now. Continue to watch the credits if you'd like. Phil would like to thank all these people. Supported by all these people. Fez. Yes. There was a lot of work put into this game, and it's really evident in the amount of polish. Um, we're not done, of course. There's still a few more episodes that I'm going to have to make in order to highlight the last four anti-cubes. Um, as well as some other things. That's right, this game doesn't just stop at collecting all the artifacts, and cubes, and anti-cubes, and maps, and all that. But there's actually three diabolical puzzles hidden in the shadows. I'll give you guys more on that as time goes on. Hey look, John Blow, he made Braid. Danny B, he made the music for Super Meat Boy. Adam Saltzman, I don't know what he did, but he seems important. Renaud Bedard, he helped make the game. Renaud would like to thank these people. Yeah. Good. No fun games. No fun games allowed. Jim and M. They're good people. I would assume. Mom and Papa Seven Yen. Lots of special thanks. I have a lot of people to thank. Yes, this game is available on Xbox Live, so you can go ahead and pick it up. That's where I first experienced this game. Uh, to be honest, there's not that much different between the Xbox and the PC version. The only couple things I can think of is that you can use the uh, both sticks to tr kind of tilt the artifacts when you're looking at them a little bit more, and also the controller actually rumbles to the left and right when you're standing on those pillars instead of playing the noises. 
those are just minor things. If you have one, you've basically played the other. And that is it for Fez. So, thank you all very much for watching. Again, I'd like to thank you guys because, you know, you watch my videos and I appreciate that. See you guys next time.